you. Yeah. I'm so curious about the aspect of knowing that I am non-physical energy. I would love help with um, a perspective that I can... Um, you ever seen a corpse? <laughs> <laughs> That's a clue. Is it... Life force, not so much. It's as simple as that. It's as simple as that. The yeah. important thing to understand is that once you reemerge into non physical and are not flowing through your physical apparatus, your consciousness remains. And the only way that you can really know that is by having your own experience of interacting with that. Words don't teach. You're witnessing Esther, but how do you know? How do you know? She could just be really good at words. How do you know? There's no way of knowing. You might see auras. Do you see auras? There's some lights around her. There's a whole bunch of non-physical of us. And you might see that, but you could be hallucinating too. <laughs> so the way you come to know is by wanting to know and then by having experiences and connecting the dots. And that's how you come to know. I have so many wonderful experiences where I feel tapped in, tuned in, all of that. And then like an amnesia, like I forget. And it's not that I feel bad or anything. You don't forget, you get distracted. You don't forget the law of attraction calls you in the direction of something that you've been thinking about. But when you do that thing that you call forgetting, what happens next? You feel negative emotion. What does that let you know? Mm, I've diverged from what I know. Do you know the difference between clarity and confusion? Well, show yourself how to get clear and then get yourself in a muddle and then acknowledge. Well, when I got clear, I was by myself and I sat and I focused upon some things I appreciated and I got feeling better and better. And then I got a real trend going. That's how I would explain to myself this high flying feeling that I accomplished through focus. Then get you into a room with a bunch of people that are bickering and arguing about a whole bunch of different things and feel yourself descend into a feeling of confusion and then connect the dots. They're not talking like their inner beings. They're talking in opposition to their inner beings. They're all victims. They're all blaming their guilty and their emotions. That one's angry. That one's afraid. That one passed out. <laughs> My limiting belief that I'm just seeing right now is that if I know I'm God, I can do anything. And I, and I feel like, um, well, first of all, <laughs> sometimes you sound as if you feel proud of your limiting beliefs. So let's just start by saying the belief that I stumble across that I know is not beneficial to me is what was it again? That if I am God, I can do anything. Well, what's your perspective of God? In other words, that's really a can of worms, isn't it? God's responsible for everyone and God will just zap you with well-being and well-being and well-being. And I'm not even sure there is a God because there's a whole bunch of well-being that's not going on. And if there were a God, why would that stuff be happening all over the place? In other words, you got to kind of clean up your vibration about what you even think God is. If we were most of you, we wouldn't want to own up to what you think God is. Yeah. Because what you think God is, is failing at what you think God should be doing. Because that's not how it works. You are the creator of your own reality. That non-physical energy did not say, go forth and control all things. It said, go forth and observe and decide and then focus and then watch what comes into being because you are the creator of your experience, not of everything that exists. You're an extension of God, but don't claim all the Goddom. You're an extension of it. You're an extension of it, you see. Yeah, that's so good. And you can feel when you're letting yourself be that and you can feel when you've pinched yourself off from it, you see. It's really interesting. It's so hard for you to hear people that are praising God and speaking that they are living the word of God who are so mean every time they turn around. They don't have a good thing to say about that group of people over there. 
that's not how God is. God is not vengeful and petty and negative and condemning and punishing. That's the other end of the stick. That's the absence of it. But they pick the stick up that is the essence of what that non-physical pure positive energy is. And most everybody talks about it from the other end of the stick because they want to put the fear of God in you because they want to control you because you're so meek. You're not willing to just let yourself believe that you are good. And so if you can't just relax and feel God's love, then you might follow that rabbit down that other rabbit hole. I'll prove my godliness by my anger, by my protest, by my eliminating everything from the planet that I think isn't good. I'll push against what I think is not good. Not having a clue that every time you're pushing against that thing you do not want, you are a vibrational match to it. And then that's where you get your doubt. Your doubt isn't about source energy. It's not about your inner being. It's about humans version of God. And we're glad you don't believe in that because it doesn't exist. That's not what it is. Yes. Source adores you. Yeah. Well, we got a little carried away there. <laughs> it's not important to you that you hear these words and apply them or even ever speak them to someone else but what is important to us is that you have conscious awareness of your alignment with source if you like this video don't forget to subscribe we'll see you in the next